Let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about what we can use your greenhouse for, or what people actually use their greenhouses for. I know in this series, we've talked about greenhouse structures. We've talked about all kinds of ways to heat your greenhouse, to cool your greenhouse, different types of coverings for your greenhouse, actually how to even water your plants, and different types of raised beds and wicking pots. But today, we're going to actually talk about what you can actually do with this greenhouse or what people do with their greenhouses. And it's kind of interesting because people have an idea in their head what a greenhouse is for, but there's a lot of things that you can actually use that greenhouse for. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of videos on greenhouses and growing in our archives if you want to check it out. And that's why you hit subscribe. Check out our archives. Everybody else says hit subscribe. Look at the videos we got coming. Guess what? We already got them. There are dozens and dozens of videos in there on greenhouses, on structures, on watering, on transparent materials, on you name it. We got it. Plus, we're going to put more material out there. So hit subscribe, hit like. And I don't have to bug you about this anymore. When I think about greenhouses, I think about food. So, okay, I'm a fat guy. I think about food all the time. But for me, a greenhouse is something that I can use to grow food for seasons. To grow food in times when nobody else is growing food. So I can get cool stuff, fresh stuff, better tasting stuff in seasons when we have to truck it in. We have to bring our food in where I live in Manitoba, thousands of miles from the south. And when they pick it, it's not ripe. It ripens in the trucks. They chemically ripen it. It's not good. So if we can grow more food here, especially in the seasons when we can't grow food, like in summer, it's fine. In fall, you're harvesting. But in spring and winter, we don't have good food. So if we can get good food with a greenhouse, that's what I'm all about. But that isn't what greenhouses are all about. There's a lot of other things we can use them for, as we're going to see right away. So the next thing after food that comes to the mind of most people when we talk about greenhouses is flowers. There are huge garden centers right across Canada, North America, across the US, across Europe, and pretty much everywhere, where they grow enormous amounts of flowers in greenhouses. I mean, just look at the pictures here. I mean, there's lots of them. They're, they're, they're cool. They're awesome. You can get them for inside your house, for outside your house. And there's enormous businesses that have grown up around the flower business. I mean, the Netherlands, it's, it's crazy the amount of flowers they grow there. But that's nothing compared to actually what's spread out in small greenhouse growers right across Canada and the United States growing flowers just from seed to make money, commercial greenhouses. Of course, the next thing when we talk about growing flowers is most of these commercial greenhouses also have starter plants. Whether it's vegetables for your garden or flowers or something else of that nature, that's a starter plant. But greenhouses are the number one way to get starter plants going because they start them earlier in the season, especially in the climate where I'm in, Manitoba, where it's cold. You start your plants in an area where they're not going to freeze. You get them to a certain size, and once they hit that size, you sell them. I mean, it's not a very long process. Often you're only growing them for six weeks. This isn't long, this isn't huge, and there isn't a ton of overhead. The overhead comes in the fact of heat. And of course, that's something we discuss in a lot of our other videos on how to get cheap greenhouse heating for whatever your greenhouse business is. One of the big things that greenhouses are used for, and these are the good greenhouses. These are the greenhouses that are made out of glass or high-end polycarbonate, is medicine and drugs. Those substances, and I'm talking legal substances here, that we use from pharmaceutical companies to make the drugs that keep a lot of us alive, that are grown, are grown in greenhouses. And they're grown in extremely controlled climate greenhouses that are high-end, that keep weather and humidity and temperature all within very specific ranges so they have perfect, perfect plant growth. Way better control than anybody is going to ever do for flowers or for food because medicine and the plants that produce medicine need to be exact. 
in many cases at least. Something we haven't, or a lot of people haven't considered, when they think of greenhouses, they think of plants, but people also grow animals. And especially recently, because greenhouses and the structure of greenhouses can be made so cheaply, we can house animals in greenhouses, especially if you can have some sort of temperature control. So you can raise chickens, you can raise pigs, you could even raise cows in a greenhouse or a greenhouse type structure where they're sheltered from the wind, they're sheltered from the rain, from the snow, and they don't necessarily need to have a perfect 20 degree or Celsius or 70 degree Celsius inside. The animals are happy if they're just above freezing because they've got winter coats on and they've got insulation and they can survive. So one of the things that we need to consider when we're talking about uses for a greenhouse is they can actually be barns. One of the larger comments I get around greenhouses isn't necessarily for growing as well, although it does include growing, but it's actually for recreation. People want to do an addition on their home as a greenhouse or as a lean-to, or they want a separate building where they can have a hammock and a chair and they can hang out with their plants. Recreation and a recreation room as a greenhouse is an extremely popular thing, and for the most part, these buildings are high-end. Most people, when they're building a lean-to on their house, want something nice. They're going to do it with a high-end polycarbonate, or they're going to do it with glass. And you're not talking cheap when you're going to build it out of those materials, but you're talking a really nice room. If you add some sort of heating for the winter and you add proper ventilation, because they're going to heat up. If it's a greenhouse, it's going to heat up in the sun. As long as you can cover those two things, you got a fantastic recreation room or relaxation room. So this is, the next one is a little bit of a hybrid. I mean, when we talk about education and a greenhouse, generally it's going to be a greenhouse that's growing food, in some cases flowers, but most of the time it's starter plants and or finishing the plants that you're going to grow and eat. And these are in high schools and universities to teach people how to grow the food we eat. So education and educational purposes for a greenhouse is a valid use and a very popular use. There's an enormous amount of educational facilities across the United States and Canada now in the school systems that use greenhouses. The last one that I can think of, and I'm kind of hoping that you guys can help me out in the comments below and put something else that we can use greenhouses for that I haven't listed so far, is research. Scientific research, um, this is different than actually growing drugs that we use to help people, but there are all kinds of PhD programs and university programs that do actual research on how to get plants to grow better, how to get plants to be more pest resistant, how to get plants to taste better, grow faster. That kind of stuff is done primarily in greenhouses, and it's done in high-end greenhouses. It's not done in generally the cheap ones that I'm trying to get people to build. I mean, when I talk greenhouses, I generally talk ROI for food or flowers or starters and being able to build it, heat it, and cool it for as little as possible and still have a great structure. When we talk about things like research, education, recreation, these are the higher-end greenhouses. These are the greenhouses that are built out of polycarbonate. These are the greenhouses that are built out of glass. These are greenhouses that will have a gas furnace in them and an actual air conditioner, a huge air conditioner, because they're not really as worried about a return on investment. They just want it. And the cost of operating it isn't as big an issue as actually having it. So that's the eight ways that I know that greenhouses are used today. If you know of something else, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.